breaking of every stronghold, the breaking of every soul tie. We thank you for the breaking. We thank you for the breaking. No power of the enemy. No stronghold of the enemy. Whatever has the power to hold its grip. We thank you for the breaking. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your power. Your resurrecting power. Your resurrecting power. Your mighty strong power. Your delivering power. Your redemptive power. Your restoring power. Your healing power. Your healing power. Your delivering power. Your saving power. Your saving power. Your saving power. If it had not been for the mercy of Jesus. If it had not been for the grace of Jesus. If it had not been for the love of Jesus. If it had not been for the love of Jesus. If it had not been for the love of Jesus. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your power. We thank you for coming to see about us. We thank you for hearing every single prayer. We thank you for seeing on the inside. We thank you for healing from the inside out. We thank you for changing from the inside out. We thank you for your power. Somebody ought to bless the name of Jesus. We command the kingdom of God to be made manifest in the bodies of your creation. We trust you to manifest as Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. We release the kingdom of God into the emotions of the sons and daughters. We lose the lordship of Jesus Christ into the nervous system of every believer at every place that this sound of intercession is lifted. We calibrate that place for miracles, signs, and wonders. We take authority over the latitude and the longitude of every place that this sound of worship and prayer will be played. Father, blow the breath of life. Well, good evening, and God bless you. We hope to provide some motivation for your midweek. Thank you for tuning in tonight. We're so glad that you decided to stop in and join with us as we worship God tonight. We've got a powerful, powerful teaching in store for you tonight. But before we move any further, I just want to let you know how you can give cheerfully and support this ministry. We have several ways in which you can give. You can give by using our cash app. That's dollar sign, R-O-L-W, Muskegon. You may also visit our website at R-O-L-W, Muskegon.com. There you can use PayPal or your debit or credit card. You may also mail your gift by making a check or money order payable to R-O-L-W-M-I and mail that to 1550 East Laketon Avenue, Muskegon, Michigan, 49442. Lastly, you can use our text to give platform. So text the word give and include a dollar amount to text number 231-221-2160. That number again is 231-221-2160. Just text the word give and a dollar amount. Saints, thank you. God bless you. You know, right now we're getting ready to partner with our worship team. And we just ex we invite you to just stand, you know, move your furniture out of the way. Just get loose. Get ready to get free in God as our worship team leads us before the Father. And then right after that, we're going to bring a powerful lesson to you tonight. God bless you. Hallelujah. We are so glad that you would join us on this morning and just giving all the glory and all the honor and all the praise unto our God.
because surely he is worthy of the glory. Come on, just right there where you are in your home, just begin to lift up your hands. But don't just lift up your hands, lift up your heart. Come on and just lift up your heart unto our God and let the glory rise. Come on, we're going to cry out on this morning. We're crying out for the glory of our God. We need the glory of our God. We need the glory of our God. We need his weighty presence in the earth right now. Hallelujah. I just believe that you need his weighty presence right now. Hallelujah. Right where you are. Come on, just begin to beckon. He is El Hakobah. He is the God of glory. And we want his glory to rise in the midst of us. Let the whole earth be filled with your glory, God. Let the whole earth be filled with your glory, God. We want the whole earth to be filled with your glory, God. Hallelujah. Let it rise. Let it rise. Come on, let it rise. Let it rise. Let it rise. As I praise it, feel the sky. Let it rise, let it rise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let it rise, let it rise. As I praise it, come on, fill it up. Feel the sky. Let it rise, let it rise. Let it rise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory, God. 
Welcome to the Rivers. I'm Evangelist Linda, and I'd like to welcome you on behalf of Apostle Rod and our beautiful prophetess, Selena Stevenson. You're welcome. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to dive right in tonight because I'm so excited of the title. What God has given me is to encourage you. I love a message of encouragement. I truly believe the body of Christ needs to be encouraged in this season. The title is Kingdom, Authority, and Trusting God. Sounds simple, doesn't it? But we'll see, is it simple to trust God, to trust the unseen God, an invisible God in a world that's designed by time? Amen. I'm going to dive right in. It's going to be a little different tonight, for I'm going to start off with testimonies. Yes, testimonies of people I call generals of the faith who I know trusted God and still today are trusting the Lord. Amen. I believe the greatest victory for me is when I hear other people's testimony of how they made it through, how they believe God and he came through for them. It gives me strength. It gives me courage. So I want you to be encouraged tonight, knowing that the God we serve is faithful. He's committed to you, to me. Amen. I'll start off with a story about a cable bill. <laughs> this was back in 1992. I had just given my life to the Lord Jesus Christ and my cable got turned off and I was devastated. A new Christian. People say that, you know, becoming a believer of Jesus Christ, that my life would change. I expected my cable bill to change. I expected a miracle, miraculous payment for this bill to get paid. But yet my cable got cut off. I tell you, it was the best thing that ever happened to me hallelujah because when this cable got turned off the only channel i could get i kid you not was tbn or tct which was the christian network i grew in faith i learned so much about god through the christian station it was the only channel i could get now looking back on that if it had not been for the christian station I would not have grown as fast in the Lord, in the knowledge of God. I'd have been watching all kinds of stuff, and my spirit would have been torn. But because I only had the Christian station to watch, I grew in faith. Even when things don't turn out the way you think they, that you desire for them to, you got to know that God is working it out for our good. Amen. The second story I'll tell you about is a lady I knew who needed her light bill paid. And this one is kind of funny. If you know me, it's funny. I picked this lady up. She needed a ride to go to school, to the college, uh, MC. And I picked her up and in the car she was telling me about she needed her light bill paid. It had to be paid by four o'clock that day. That's when the light company closes. And she didn't have no way to pay it she had been believing God. She was trusting God. And that was, you know, she was at the end, but she said she still was going to believe God. And I'm thinking, okay, girl, the day is almost over. It's almost like an hour from four o'clock. God ain't showed up for you. Your life bill is going to be like my cable bill turned off. Okay. <laughs> so I told her this. I said, if I had the money, I would pay that bill for you. And I dropped her off. And I kept on going. Now, I went home, and I checked my mailbox. And what do you know? I had a check in the mail for 400 and something dollars from my mortgage company, a rebate. 
I wasn't expecting it. Don't even know why they sent it to me. But I was so happy when I saw that check. Oh, I celebrated, shouted all up in that car. Hallelujah, got you good. And all of a sudden, the video of my day was rewind. I kid you not. And I saw myself look at that sister and say, girl, if I had the money, I would pay that bill for you. And I had to take a deep breath along with a swallow. <clears throat> what did I tell her that for? That was my thought. So I said, but God, I'll be obedient. Because I felt in my spirit, if you don't keep your word, this money will be sucked up. So I called my husband and I told him, what the Lord said, thinking, or maybe even kind of hoping he'll be like, look, you ain't gonna go pay nobody else's bill, that's ours. But that's not what my husband said. He was like, do what the Lord tells you to do. And then the other miracle was the fact that I had, I found a lady, I went looking for her and found her. To make a long story short, she made it to the light company five minutes before it closed. <laughs> Jesus, and her bill was paid. I got to see a miracle. I got to see how faithful Jehovah is. She trusted him even to the end. She did not worry. She was like, I trust him. And even in my mind with my saved stuff, I was thinking like, girl, the day is about gone. <laughs> God doesn't let you down. <laughs> but he didn't. He is faithful. When we trust him, all things work together for the good of those who love him and called according to his purpose. If we believe, yes, in a God we can't see. Hallelujah. The next story I'll tell you is about um, a lady who I went to church with. She uh, was getting married, and she needed to pay for something for her wedding. And she was praying. Now, I didn't know she was praying. I hadn't talked to her, you know, and... When I was praying, I had a need, and the Lord spoke to me. I had so much money in my bank account, wasn't enough for my need at all. And during prayer, I cried out to God, like, Lord, I need this. We need this bill. This is due, God. I've seen you do it before. Lord, I need you. And the Lord spoke to me, and I knew it. You know when God speaks to you. I knew it without a shadow of a doubt. When I got off that floor, the Lord told me, go, and this is going to sound crazy, but it was the Lord. Go empty your bank account out. And he showed me the lady and take it to sister so-and-so. And I'm like, okay, God, I know I'm here for you, but that, that, that's deep. You want me to empty my bank? I'm crying out to you for some money. This, this ain't right. You want me to take what little bit I got? I need to add to that. But again, I heard in my spirit to empty that account, take it to this lady. And trust me, now that's deep. That's some blind faith right there. So I said, okay, God, if this really you, I'm going to go to my husband's job, and I'm going to tell my husband, and my husband's going to be like, you out your mind. That's all we got. God ain't told you that. So God, if it's really you, my husband's going to say, okay. God is my witness. I went to my husband's job. He came outside, and I said, Scott, I just prayed. And this is what God said. He told me to close the account out, and he told me to go give it to this lady. And my husband looked at me and said, okay, do what God said do. I said, oh, God, <laughs> you spoke to me, Jesus. You spoke to me. I had my faith right there was so strong that when my husband confirmed it, oh, couldn't nobody tell me that God wasn't going to show up for me. I went to the lady at the church, gave her the money, she couldn't do nothing but praise God. She told me that she had been praying for that. She needed that amount, the exact amount, to take care of something for her wedding. I went home for the next three days. I kid you not. I went out and looked at my mailbox. Why I did it, I don't know. I can't even tell you why I did it. When I look back on it now, I'm like, what was I thinking? But I knew God was, I knew God was gonna do something. I knew God was gonna do it. How I knew, I don't know. Was I expecting any money? No. I was just a little black woman <laughs> who was crazy enough to believe a God she couldn't see. But I know he real. On the third day, I kid you not, the first day I went to the mailbox, nothing. 
said, okay, it's coming. I don't know how you're going to do it, God. I don't know where it's coming from, but I know you spoke to me and my blessing is coming. The second day, went to the mailbox, nothing. God, I know you're going to do it. I know you're going to do it. The third day, kid you not, God is my witness. Went to the mailbox. It was a check in there. Three times the amount that I sold. I kid you not. I was blown away with praise. God, you're real. God, you're awesome. He started me off in the little things. And now I trust him. Because I know, can't nobody tell me what God won't do. I'm not giving any praise to myself, but I'm giving praise all to him. I know that he's a way maker. I know that if it's for me, it's mine, it's a done deal. He already done did it. It just have to manifest into this material world that we live in that is bound by time. But my God isn't bound by time. Amen. I know another story of a man's who had, was diagnosed with what they call Agent Orange. He had got it when he was in the service. I hope I pronounced that right. His wife is truly a believer, and they had gave him up for dead, told his wife, call the family in, this is it. Your husband is a goner. She would not receive it. She believed God. She trusted God. She called on the name of God, and her husband is still alive. And actually, he died again due to COVID and came back. <laughs> he refused to check out. He has grandkids, and he want to be here for them. Now, them his words, okay? Another story I knew of a lady whose husband had worked at this factory for 13 years, and then the factory closed down. During the time of all these factories was closing down here in Muskegon, and this lady prayed to God like, Lord, what are we going to do? What are we going to do, Father? I trust you to make a way. And God did. He blessed her husband with another job. The husband worked at this job about three years, and guess what happened? That job closed down. The lady was like, God, you blessed him with that job. Now it done closed down. What we going to do, God? Lord, what we going to do? So the Lord blessed her, her husband with another job. Her husband worked that job for about two to, I think, probably two or three years, and guess what? It closed down. So this lady was on her face in her hallway, and not that she doubted God, but she needed him to confirm reassurance for her heart. She was crying out, snotting, tearing, whatever, on her face. And she heard the voice of the Lord tell her, stop crying. It's all right. Y'all going to be all right. Trust me. Remember what I did for you? Remember when you needed this and I came through? Remember when this needed to have been done and I came through? Remember when your children and I came through? Remember when your kids were getting picked on the classroom and they asked you, Mama, pray, and you prayed, and the next day they went to school, that child, the other child was moved out the classroom, and you hadn't even called the school supernaturally? The Lord spoke to her. He reminded her of his goodness. Hey! Oh, God. He reminded her of his goodness, of his steadfast, of his love. And it gave her the strength to trust him even more. And God worked it out for the husband. The husband wind up being disabled. God worked it out. What are you saying? I'm saying trust him. Even if it don't turn out the way you think, or the way you desire it, trust him. He knows what tomorrow holds. He knows. I'm reminded from time to time of Prophet Kim Komet, who is in heaven now. But years ago, I was in a place in my life when I was going through something, and I saw God's goodness and his faithfulness. But Kim had a song, and it would say, it says, I'm somewhere in the future and I look much better than I look right now. And God gave me that song through that prophet at a time when I needed 
to hear that those words. I needed those words to carry me to my next season. So for a season, because God deals with us in seasons, amen, I would sing that song to myself. I'm somewhere in the future, and I look much better than I look right now. I'm somewhere in the future, and I look much better than I look right now. My circumstances changed. I remember going through something in debt over 50 some thousand and it looked like I was going to lose my home. Didn't know what we were going to do at this season in our life. And Kim Commit says, you're somewhere in the future and you look much better than you look right now. And I held on to that word of encouragement. And within 30 days of that thought, Everything was taken care of. I can't even tell you how. <laughs> I don't even know what happened. I honestly, God, I can't even tell you how. Now this is a memory, a testimony to give God the glory. Don't even know how it came to pass. Because all I remember is just singing, I'm somewhere in the future, and I look much better than I look right now. Now I'm in my tomorrow. Tomorrow has become my today, and it's my future. And I'm looking much better than I did back then. The circumstance has changed because of trust. Trust in the Lord. He walked with me. He led me. He guided me. He educated me. He counseled me. He showed me his beauty. He showed me his glory. He showed me that I could trust him. Man of failure, but I can always trust him. And even when man failed me, guess what? There's a lesson learned in that I found out. Even still, I got to trust him. Amen. Amen. I knew a woman who, in her 20s, wanted to give up on her marriage. Now, this lady had a strange feeling, and I know it was so demonic. It came upon her twice in her life with her husband. One day, she did leave her husband, but God fixed it. They wound up back together. They were separated for six months. So the, Lord, the lady eventually received Jesus Christ, and during her um, life cycle being saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, she, the Spirit came upon her again. And all of a sudden, one day, she was like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with this marriage. I'm done with this husband. God, I'm done. And she went to sleep on her couch. And she heard the voice of the Lord saying, don't do it. Not hard, not, not forcefully, just a gentle voice. Don't do it. Go and get in the bed with your husband. Now, this lady was very upset with the Lord. Very, because she had made up her mind, I'm done. And God, you don't have the right to force me to stay in a marriage I don't want to be in. I'm living for you, but he's not. Now, we know the scripture says that if the unsaved husband wants to continue with the saved wife, you stay. You don't change your circumstances just because you get saved. Somehow we forget to have grace and compassion and mercy and to pray and to hold on and to trust, to believe for that person. She was like, I'm done with this marriage. It'll be me and my kids and the Lord. And she could have chose that path. But the blessing is God knows what tomorrow holds. God knows her future. He knows the plans he has for her to prosper and be in good health. Now, she could have been foolish and could have stayed on that couch, got up the next day, because these was her plans, get me an apartment, and she was going to be happy. So she thought, but God had other plans. Make a long story short, she was obedient to the Lord. She walked and went in her room, got in the bed. And the hardest thing for her to do was to reach out and touch her husband. Because she was so done, so over it. The love that she felt or thought she felt, her heart was, her heart was so hard. She felt nothing but disgust and hatred for him. 
And he didn't even really do nothing that bad. I don't even think she can remember what it was she was mad about today. God worked it out. Now her husband is a believer of Jesus Christ. Just think if she would have been foolish to leave that good man, somebody else would have had that good man. <laughs> Jesus, help me, Lord. Somebody else would have had that good man or he probably may not have even come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. But through her, her obedience, her trusting God, she trusted the Lord. Lord, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to stay with him. Even if I have to cry, pray, whatever I got to do, God, I'm going to stay on my knees. I'm going to put oil on his pillow and I'm going to pray. I'm going to use wisdom. Do it when he don't even see it, God. I'm going to pray over his food. Whatever this woman had to do, she found favor like Mary did in God's sight. And God answered her cry. Amen. I knew a couple who had issues with their mortgage. The mortgage company did something really devious and deceitful to them. And they wind up, you know, not having their home. But they trusted God. I watched from a distance these people, this couple, trust the Lord. And my faith was strengthened watching them. They still came praising they still smiled. They still prayed for others. They still gave. They didn't stop. They were relentless. Now, they could have moped. They could have said, I'm done. I'm, I'm out of this Christianity. It's not working. God, you, you allowed us to lose our home. Where were you, God? Why didn't you stop it, God? But I tell you, ooh, can you say restoration? Can you say sweet reward? Oh, Payback was so good for them. I watched it. New house. What the devil stole, he had to pay them. More than what the house was worth. And some. I bet you when they look back now, they just laughing at Satan. Say, Satan, if you knew it was going to turn out this sweet, you would have left us alone. You would have never messed with us. <laughs> say restitution. Say it out there. I hear it. Say restitution. Hey, <laughs> oh, God is good. I'm laughing because I'm thinking about what he done did and I'm brought us through. Amen. Oh, I know a woman who is still trusting God. Her son was murdered. And every day she has to trust God to even get up out of bed. That's deep. It was her only son. Now the life is going on. Everybody else going on once they buried him. Everybody else's life is going on. But every day she has to trust God to take one step out her door. She have to trust God in her house when she walk past his room. She have to trust God when she just standing there and she smell him. She has to trust God to forgive the person that took his life. Do she have a right to be angry? Do she have a right to hold in her heart anger and malice and guilt and, and wish for vengeance? Kill him, Lord. Kill him dead. Let him be raped in prison. All this evil stuff could come up in our hearts if we allow it. But it takes trust to say, God, I trust you because your word said vengeance is mine. You said vengeance is mine, God. You said I don't have a right to be angry to go and wish death on him. You said I have to forgive. I got to trust you that you're going to work it all out. I'm gonna, I got to trust you that you will, this whole, this pain, that you're healing it every day. That's trust. That's trust. And you haven't materialized in front of me, God, so I don't see you standing right here in front of me so I can touch you. But I got to believe that you're here. I got to trust you to forgive and love somebody that took something so precious from me that I carried for nine months. Oh, God. But she do. I see it. Amen. Amen. 
That's the God we serve. I call these people generals of the faith. And you may be going through something right now. Trusting God, walking through it. We see you from a distance. We see it. We see what comes out your mouth. We see the victory. We see you praising him. We see you celebrating God. We see you trusting God and has given us strength every day. For the enemy think he has you on display <laughs> and your family on display. Oh, God is laughing at him for the plans that he has for his children. Victory, restitution, payback. So sweet. So sweet. I've learned that there's a maturity in the faith where believers get to a point where they don't even really walk by time. And hear me good. I'm not saying that time doesn't exist for the generals of the faith. I'll give you an example. When you pray, if you've ever been in prayer and and came into the secret place of the Most High God. Psalms 91. And you pray and two hours done passed, three hours done passed. And you look at the clock and you're like, man, it's three hours, four hours. And your family like, she's, or he, she, or he's still in there? But you didn't realize the time passed because you've been in another realm, another dimension of his glory. Well, your tongues take on a whole nother realm itself. Well, you might even have visitation of angels. Apostle told us a story about how he was in the sanctuary and he was moved like a water wave. Many of us have had these experiences, but a lot of people, we don't tell it or don't talk about it because it seems spooky to 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 baby Christians or some people that doesn't understand the spirit realm. But my point is this, there is a t place in the spirit where time becomes irrelevant. And that's where the Lord wants us to get to. Where we're not guarded by man's time or you have to do this or God move right now. But through faith, I trust you God because there's no time in you. God is already done. <laughs> I sound like apostle, my spiritual father. It's already done. It took me a while to grasp and understand that teaching, the series that he gave us. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go on our rivers page and just go back a little bit to Apostle Rod's teaching where he teaches it's already done by faith, knowing that you're already healed, knowing that God has already made provision for you. It's already done because that's a place that that the generals of faith walk in that's not governed by time. It's already done. I don't have to wait till I get there for it to be done. I don't have to wait till 7 o'clock to be healed, 9 o'clock to get the provision. I already know it's done. Amen. Now, I want to, our scripture is Hebrews 11, 4 through 39. I didn't give it to you because now I'm going to get to it. Amen. But I want to say that. When we trust God, starting in the little things, it builds us up to believe him for the big things, for great things. Amen. Amen. Abraham was willing to sacrifice his son because he trusted the invisible God of heaven. Now, that's deep. He was willing to sacrifice his son because he knew God would, or the, would bring him back to life or do something. That's faith. That's faith. To take your child and say, okay, I'm going to put you on this altar and I'm going to kill you to please God because I know God going to re-erect you, re resurrect you, or do something to bring you back to me. That's trust. That's a relationship. That's a covenant agreement. Hey, that's deep. That's like Enoch walking with God daily throughout the day some of us visit God will allow him to come in and have dinner with us have lunch with us but very few surrender all he says in Psalms 91 he who abides in the secret place of the most high God in that place under that protection under the wings of God 
that person is protected from the arrows by night. He's talking about a person that allowed the Holy Spirit to be, to live within, to inhabit his spirit, his being. Amen. Abraham trusted the Lord, Jehovah, that he was willing to sacrifice his son. And it didn't stop there. We see that it passed down through the bloodline. Isaac had a relationship with God. He saw his father trust in the Lord. So he trusted God, even with his children, even with his grandchildren, Joseph, that he prophesied it over his grandchildren, Joseph, told him that they would leave Egypt. How did he know that? He had a relationship with God, that he was able to hear God's voice. I'm sure he wasn't hearing God's voice, you know, spending one day out of a year with the Lord. And I'm sure God has spoke to some people because Moses didn't know him. He spoke through the burning bush. I'm not saying that God won't. But I'm talking about covenant relationship that the Lord wants us to walk in. The days are evil. We're in a time in history that we haven't seen before. He said it would be like the days of Noah. I don't even have to tell you what it is. You know what's happening in the earth. God wants us to trust him. Through this COVID, he wants us to trust him. Whether you get the shot, do get the shot, don't get the shot, whatever, he wants you to trust him. Whatever decisions we make, we have to trust the Lord. And let's don't forget about Rahab. I like this part because she was a prostitute. She was a prostitute. She turned her back on her own kinsmen to trust a God, Jehovah, of foreigners, and found favor with God. Rahab, a woman that was unlikely to be favored by society, but she was willing to believe in an invisible God as we learn God's ways, as we learn to trust him, we begin to live and walk in his peace. We begin to see life out of a larger lens. I like that. That's my version of it. I call it, as we grow in the Lord, we'll begin to see the glass half full instead of half empty. You know, people disagree and have disagreements as believers one might say, well, you know what? That glass is half empty. And then the other person may say, no, to me, I prefer to see the glass half full. And that's where I am. I prefer to see it half full. <laughs> that's hope. We can fill it up some more. <laughs> now, you see it half empty, you might want to drink it on out. Drink it down. <laughs> drink the rest of it. Amen. Another scripture before I close, Hebrews 11, 1 to 3. Faith, trust, shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see. Through their faith, belief, or trust, the people in the days of old earned a good reputation. I have a question for you before I close. And see, we ain't even here that long for God to say what he needs to say. The question is, and I had to ask myself these questions. What does your faith, your trust, or belief in God say about your reputation? What is God saying? Do you really trust me? Do she trust me? Do he trust me? Do God count your trust in him as a good reputation, status? What is the Lord saying about your trust? Are you walking with him? Or can anybody come and tell you something and then you just shake it? Don't know what to believe, who to believe. Whose report will you believe? Do you choose to believe the report of the Lord? Who do Jesus say you are? You remember that question Jesus asked the disciples? Who do men say I am? Who do Jesus say you are? Who do Jesus say I am? How much do you trust the Lord? Who are you in faith? Amen. And, I, and as I close, I just want to say that 
I learned this week from a, a, a prophet, uh, I think it was on television, I had two dreams from the Lord about trust, and, the, and I didn't know what it meant. So I was talking to my aunt, Sister Everly. I, I talked to Prophet Ann and talked to my daughter. I'm like, I had these two dreams. The first dream about trust, okay, I get it. God's speaking to me. The second dream about trust, I got kind of scared. Because <laughs> I'm like, Lord, twice? The Lord spoke to me twice. And then I found out the prophet said, the Lord speaks to you twice. But I was so nervous. I said, God, am I doing something wrong? Am I not trusting you enough? Lord, you got to make this clear what you're saying. And then I, I had a, 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 another dream, and the Lord was so beautiful and so gracious. He definitely, if you want to know, he'll make it plain to you. He'll make it clear to you. So I said that to say, if you're going through anything and you need clarification, just ask him. And trust and know that you'll receive an answer. He's faithful. Amen. And now for my sisters and brothers in the Lord, if you've been doubting the Lord, and, and I don't even want to say doubting, but just unsure about some things in your life where you stand with God and trusting him or whatever, just repent. Repent. I don't care if you got to repent 100 times a day. Repent. He loves us. We're down here on this earth to get it right, to learn, to learn him. Just repent and ask him to show me, Lord, show me so I can trust you. And he will. He's faithful. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and you want to trust him, oh, my God, he's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting. He wants to walk with you. He wants to lead you. He wants to guide you. Just repeat after me. We're talking to the Father God in heaven about his son, Jesus. Just say, Father God, I believe that Jesus is your son, that he died on the cross for my sins. Forgive me for my sins. I'm a sinner, and I need a Savior. Come into my heart and fill me with your spirit. I announce all works of the evil one. In Jesus' name, amen. That simple. And if you need a good church, hey, you tuned in to one. We'll welcome you. We already love you. <laughs> Don't know you, but we're praying for you. We pray for this city. We pray for the world. We pray for the nations. I welcome you to Rivers Sunday morning, 11 o'clock. We practice social distancing. Wear your mask. If you don't have it, we got one for you. We check temperatures. We're safe. It's a safe place. Come, be blessed, enjoy your night. I love you. God loves you. Good night.